All right, let's go to the next video. The trauma of childhood shows. The one most common human trait everyone shares is having some sort of childhood trauma. Whether it was daddy getting a demotion at work and taking out the anger on you after it, daddy just poof, not being there for you, falling off the playground slide and being left with the worst third degree burns known to man. There's so many things that can happen in your childhood that permanently scar you for the rest of your life. And the one source of joy you have to distract you from this cruel, cruel world as a kid is cartoons. Kids could have came straight off Epstein's boat with the most traumatic and disgusting memories ingrained in their brain. But if they turn on one of the classic seasons of SpongeBob, not gonna lie, all of that trauma would go away for those 10 minutes. Uh, I don't think so. We all have our favorite cartoons growing up, of course, that we cherish to this day. But as much joy as they caused, I'm also starting to realize how much genuine trauma people actually have from cartoons like there's so many callbacks to things people only find out and realize when they're older that were really odd i think one of the most universally up confusing things they would have in cartoons is freeze frames what is a freeze frame you may ask you remember when you were eight casually watching an episode of spongebob and in the middle of all the goofy shenanigans going on it would just be the most disgusting haunting repulsive frame of Something in the camera. For I mean, I wouldn't say those were traumatic. I would say those were gross. Dude, the tra two traumatic shows. Courage the Cowardly Dog. And the Meaty Boy one. What was that one show? Meaty Boy Nickelodeon show. Mr. Meaty was the most terrifying show. I wouldn't even want to watch it now. I'm 21 and I would not want to watch Mr. Meaty. Mr. Just look at them. Just look how, like, this is already scary as They're like these weird puppets with, like, like it looks like he hasn't slept in weeks. And in every episode, they would do the creepiest shit. There's an episode where they ate someone's arm. And it's, like, supposed to be funny. It's just weird. They, like, burn his arm in the fryer and then just fucking eat it first split second. Legit, I still have zero clue why they would just randomly throw in these frames every couple of random episodes. I know for a fact the writers was probably sitting up there dying laughing, making these frames just thinking, <laughs> oh man, this is some good shit right here. These little rascals won't see it coming. And the thing is to the writers, they probably thought it would just be some funny little joke to do and no one would actually think twice about it. But I've heard from a lot of people that are grown now, they the still think back to them. And I also understand that feeling because some of these frames were definitely more disturbing than they should have been. My personal top three for the worst SpongeBob frames are the Nasty Patty frame. This one mainly got me because as a kid, you're not used to seeing the most molded out disgusting food ever. You know, I was used to seeing a TV commercial S burger or one out of a Big Mac container, but this, like, why does it have pimples with a pus coming out the top? Why is there mold coming from the meat? Leaking substance from the middle? It's just, Gross. The next one is this still frame of sponge. Okay, that's gross. Okay. The patty, no, this is... I remember seeing this. That's foul. Bob right here. Never in my life should I have saw SpongeBob this detailed in the show as a kid. Nigga looks like the local crackhead you could- But if they were real, that's what... Like, SpongeBob would more likely look like this if he was a real person. Like, if SpongeBob actually existed in the real world, he would look like this. Like, weird hairs sticking out. Just some creepy-ass fucking eyes. You could find behind your I'm gonna look up Spongebob in real life. Spongebob in real life. Oh, yeah. Oh, stop. Like, this is scary. Holy shit, dude. That's fucking so weird. Patrick doesn't look... Patrick just looks like a jacked-ass bodybuilder. Like, not that sc Spongebob looks like he would eat my family. Like, genuinely like he would trap me into a basement and then pin me to a radiator and then fucking slice off pieces of my skin and, like, eat it in front of me. And, like, serve me. Like, my only dinner would be, like, my family members. And, like, he would make me consume, like, people that I know. That's scary. Patrick built, like, the Hulk. Yeah, now Patrick ain't that fucking scary. Real life Patrick isn't that scary. Do you or somebody you love like Joe Bartolozzi's content and want to rep some of his merch? Well, I can help you. Joe Bartolozzi just came out with merch for the first time in fucking forever. And this time, it is an ass. 
you can rep his stuff and have it actually make sense to people that don't know him, unlike many other creators that make merch that makes no sense. Joe Bartolozzi's does, so you won't look like an idiot while wearing it. There are multiple products to choose from, including shirts, beanies, hoodies, and windbreakers, all of different colors. The designs are great and rep the message, think for yourself, which is something Joe Bartolozzi stands by and really ties into the message that people should stop being fucking idiots and think for themselves rather than being mindless fucking dumbasses that only get their thoughts from other people. Just look how fashionable I look. You can look great as well if you head on down to the link in the description and get some of this fine merch today. Great material, reasonable pricing, a fashion statement, and a great message everybody can adore. Limited time only. Get it while you can. Get get the merch. Get the like, link in the description. I didn't know get time the was merch. still going. Get the merch. All right, back to the video. Your local 7-Eleven. It's something about his beet red eyes, veins protruding and pulsing from his skin, his teeth rotten and falling out, the ingrown hair. It kind of reminds me of those pictures of those ultra-realistic cartoon characters that really just shouldn't exist. Like when they make Mario look too realistic or the Simpsons characters look too realistic. And the last one that by far tops all of them is the Mr. Krabs Naked Flame. This feels way too NSFW, so YouTube, just keep in mind that this is an animated crab from Spongebob, a family-friendly kid show. You can't make this up, though. This is a real frame in Spongebob. I, I don't know. Maybe my mind is just f***ed up now because of the internet and seeing still frames like this. I can never look at these images the same anymore. But you can't lie. This frame looks like a diabolical and it could be made to it. The way Eugene Krabs is just staring down with his body all glistening and lighting. The way Plankton has his mouth. She's adopted. Mouth. Keeping wide open. And to me as a little little kid, I thought I was seeing a grown ass man naked for the first time. I thought I was finally getting the treatment of what happens to kids if you don't follow the stranger danger rule and get into the stranger's van. But it's just crazy that there's so many odd frames like this in Spongebob you really remember even if it was just for a split second. And if you didn't grow with Spongebob, you might be looking at this like, huh, y'all were really scared of shit like this? Man, I, I was watching beheading videos at five years old. But you have to understand as a- Bro, I remember the first time somebody showed me a gore video. It was in not even gore. The first weird video I ever saw was two girls, one cup. My one friend was like, hey, dude, look at this. And just shoved the camera in my face. And I was like... Then he proceeded to show me one man, one jar. And I have that vividly ingrained into my mind forever. Uh, also, I saw one man in uh, one screwdriver. That was worse than one man, one jar. One man, one jar was really bad, though. Uh, and then I had a friend. I remember my senior year, I was on a trip, right? Like, my senior year, we had, like, uh, uh, a getaway thing. This was right before COVID, actually. And we had, like, this getaway thing, right, for, like, two days, three days, where you would just stay in this, like, house with, like, 20 other classmates that were, like, randomly selected. And you would um kind of, like, do a bunch of bonding activities, get to know each other more than you ever had before. You would kind of open up about, like, certain things. Um, and, like, coincidentally, while I was going through mine, there was a classmate that was the year above me that had just killed himself. And so we actually left the house to go to his funeral. It was one of the saddest things ever. And it was, like... It, I, I don't want to say it was, like, a good bonding scenario, but it was, like, it was the first time, like, most guys won't cry in front of each other. We all cried in front of each other as, like, men, right? Uh, or not men. I mean, we were, like, 17, 18, but, it, like, we, you're still it's seniors in high school, right? And it was, it was like, a sad thing. But it, before that, there was, like, the first night we were there, my one friend, uh, who I haven't spoken to in a while, not because of this, but um, he's, like, let's watch a pain gauntlet and I'm like what's a pain gauntlet and he goes let me show you pulls it up the first video is some guy jumping like jumping off a cliff to dive into the water he misses the water and his head smacks a rock and he dies and I go nope and I shut the fucking laptop and I go you can watch that I'm not gonna watch that two girls uh one couple's only a trailer Oscar for the sub I heard that it was fake 
Um, and that it didn't actually happen. Or that's like, it's not actually shit or something. Kid, your knowledge is very little and you only start learning things in the real world up until then. Oh, but it wasn't just SpongeBob doing this. I remember another distinct cartoon show that was even worse at it. The Marvelous Misadventures. Yo, the flap. Yo, the Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack were a, that is nostalgic, dude. I forgot about that show. That was, it was creepy too, but I, I always loved that show just because it was so weird that it was like you had to keep watching. Adventures of Flap. Especially the intro. Hold up, now I want to play the intro. Flapjack. Hey, Flapjack. Candied Island. Who needs Candied Island? It's safer at the docks. But there ain't no streams of Sony Pop. No tripping down the rocks. It's dangerous and risky. But adventurous and free. Adventure, that's the life for me. It's just any animation that's like, or not even animation, it's like claymation. That's like that. That's always a scary show. Flapjack was really the type of show where you just had to be there for it. If you don't know, Flapjack is about a little sailor boy and his captain friend who live inside of a whale next to a floating dock full of thugs and trashy people. They live there in hopes of finding a map to Candy Island. Candy Island where they can hopefully live at to eat as much candy as they want forever. Yeah, Flapjack's concept sounds totally f insane for people that have never seen it but flapjack was a classic shit was a classic i can't lie and if you think spongebob has some creepy ass images <laughs> Wait until you see Flapjack. For example, one of Flapjack's episodes called Who Let the Cats Out of the Old Bag's House? Flapjack is walking around and finds this random cat on the dock. And as Flapjack goes to pick up the cat, it randomly gives us this close-up of the cats. When I say there's zero warning, no build-up- I mean, like, it's not scary now, but when you're, like, six and you're watching Flapjack- and you see anything remotely scary. Like, this would give you nightmares if you were, like, seven. He literally just picks it up and it pauses on this frame. That frame alone clears all of SpongeBob and is enough to give a kid permanent PTSD nightmares. That's just and still scary? Not really. And Flapjack was doing this all the time with these disturbing-ass frames. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. That is a cut-off finger with the tendon still hanging out. They was really wilding with all these random-ass frames thrown in the show randomly but the cartoon that took the random creepy images frame to the max was courage the coward bro no not even the creepy images just the show because that motherfucker would go when something's literally coming to fucking murder their entire family and then these two motherfuckers are just like it's okay it's okay courage and like as a viewer you're like courage like, oh my god, do something, you're gonna die. And they would never do anything. We dog. There is no way on good gods heathens this show would ever pass the air for kids now. By far, if we're talking about random creepy cutaways, it beats the race and laps everyone in it ten times. For example, this scene when Courage is just casually sleeping on the bed and it cuts away to this creature. <laughs> It was, it was really the most random show ever. Like if you were if if you were zoned out and you started watching this, you would just it, it, it it's 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 there's no there's no logic. It's just scary. Every episode is scary. In general, this is just top 10 scariest things to ever come out of cartoon episodes in the 2000s. I'm still creeped out looking at this thing. And you have so many scenes with these nightmare-esque cutaways that everyone remembers at least one now. You got the classic Return the Slab clip with this creature. This entire episode with this white mask creature thing. Whatever the f*** this floating white head was. The freaky barber episode. Oh, oh my god. And that scary ass fucking smile that never fucking phased that dude. It was all, he was always just chilling. Just. Freaky Barber episode, the alien brain episode with a bunch of the Nah, that one wasn't that scary. Creepy little alien minglings. But out of everything that came out from this show, the one thing I'll always truly remember is how much of a Eustace was. To this day, me and my homies hate Eustace. It's on site if I see him. Another thing I want to talk about is even how some of the little kid shows back then 
were creepy. Uh, Teletubbies as the main example. Whichever TV producer- He better mention Veggie Tales because Veggie Tales is still scary to this day. Just gave the green light for Teletubbies to air on TV need to be found and interrogated. To this day, I haven't had anybody ever come up to me and be like, oh man, Teletubbies? Man, that was really my thing. I used to watch Teletubbies, but I barely remember it because there was no like, there's no plot. You would just kind of watch them run around and dance like fucking idiots. As a kid, <laughs> takes me back to amazing memories and a great time where there were no worries in life. No, no, no. Everyone just universally looks at this show back to how creepy everything is about it. First off, the look. Tell me, tell me, what type of child-friendly image is a bunch of colorful midget men with large black eyes and yellow pupils? It's exactly what I would have imagined the monster in my closet would look like as a kid. And doing some research for this video, the according eyes to are weird. The Google, they're seven to ten feet tall. Niggas should have been balling on the court with Shaq and Kobe. Why are they out prancing and dancing in a magical prairie field? I think the fact that they're that tall is real too because in the show you can see they barely fit in their own lab and the sun green screen baby <laughs> i swear for a couple of years as a kid i couldn't even look up to the sun without getting a ptsd seizure from remembering this ugly ass baby and the last thing they had this weird vacuum creature that would ran nah what's another show that was fucking scary what was that show that was half uh puppets and half people and the girl had pink hair, and there was a guy that did tricks, and then there was an evil dude. Oh, fuck. What the fuck was that show? Lazy Town. Lazy Town, the fucking characters, dude, were terrifying. Like Ziggy from Lazy Town, this creepy motherfucker. Because it would be people, and then her friends would be like, this guy. Who was just so weird and would bear his mouth would just go up and down. He wouldn't blink. That was not scary. Yes, it was. Randomly just fondle the tubbies every once in a while. Little tree friends, they give me nightmares. Well, that show is actually supposed to be scary, right? Okay, I might be a little off with that one. It was more like the thing would just, you know, annoy them and be a nuisance. But it was creepy regardless. I think it was just the live aspect with kids shows like this back then. I could say the same thing about Barney. No grown person thinks of Barney in a kid-friendly way now. It's some type of horror meme of him just looking weird. And apparently the creators of Teletubbies made a spinoff show later on with some of the creatures that were a bit more family-friendly looking. I didn't even know about it until researching for this video, but the show was called Booba. Maybe some of y'all know. And this is how the characters looked. How is it possible that they made even creepier characters for kids to watch? Booba is definitely the type of show kids watch that formed all these school shooters. But you know what? I'll grant it to them. It wasn't all of the shows. Like, shout out to Yo Gabba Gabba. Those were some real niggas. Yo Gabba Gabba wasn't scary. Yeah, Yo Gabba Gabba was a fire show. I want to go back to like, Sponge. there's nothing dangerous well, looking about quick, that. Because although up to this point I've been mentioning scary episodes from shows that were meant to be somewhat scary, SpongeBob has some of the most unintentional traumatizing episodes that people are still scarred by. Like going back to the Nasty Patty episode, this is an episode where SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs actually kill someone. I'm going to give a quick re Oh my god. Yo, no, that show's fire. No, that episode was one of my favorite episodes ever, where they're, like, freaking out. Oh, my God, I forgot about that. Yo, I would have never remembered that episode for the rest of my life. Where they're, like, hitting him in the head, and they're trying to fucking bury him, and they're freaking out, worried they're going to get caught. Recap of it for y'all. Li they literally murder somebody and try and hide the body. I don't remember. But pretty much in the episode, the health inspector walks into the Krusty Krab to do what health inspectors do. And Mr. Krab, seeing this, not wanting the Krusty Krab to shut down, supplies the health inspector with unlimited food to satisfy him and make sure he doesn't actually lose. Then a report on TV comes up saying that a fake health inspector has been tricking people to eat in their restaurants for free. And we all know how Mr. Krab's cheap ass gets when it comes to moolah. So him and SpongeBob. I'm thinking he's the fake health inspector they saw on TV. He decide to make the most disgusting concoction known to man and serve it to him as revenge. And right when the inspector's about to eat the burger, a fly goes into his mouth that kills him. Which leads to SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs trying to bury the body. Why am I as a child witnessing a cartoon sponge and crab committing first degree murder and burial? Granted, in the episode, he didn't 
actually die like he comes back at the end and is okay but now you think my brain would interpret that shit you've also got some honorable mentions like the hash slinging slasher episode with nose for at the end nah that was fucking scary at the end Oh my god, when it just jumped cut to this fucking vampire looking motherfucker. With nose for a Holy shit. To at the end. The splinter episode where his finger ends up looking like this. The episode where everyone turns into a snail like Gary. The episode where he gets stuck at the bottom of the trenches with all of the aliens that are talking like this the episode with the green screen gorilla actually no no I, I was gonna finish it here but whoever approved this episode needs to especially go f themselves everything about the gorilla episode was so traumatizing it's also well, it was a skinwalker episode it was it was all just about who's who in them too like at the end of the episode the gorilla just randomly unzips himself from a skin costume of patrick proceeds to pick up patrick and sandy put them in a sack and beat them for hours meanwhile spongebob is just watching helplessly through his window as we see the gorilla beating the hell out of them through the window then when spongebob finally decides to man up and step outside the gorilla immediately sees him grabs him and rips him into two pieces i think the scariest ass aspect about this episode is that it's, it's not really played for any type of comedic joke the gorilla looks so serious in these beatings i just had to talk about that episode that actually might be number one in this entire list it's so odd that spongebob is like the universally most watched kid show and has these unintentional scars well, because there's so many memes and it was just it was like one of the most long-running fucking uh kid shows ever made hasn't spongebob been going on since like 1999 or some shit and it's still on today. What's a fucking W vid though? No way you're saying Lazy Town is creepy. The songs were so. Lazy Town was fucking terrifying. Uh. Look at that motherfucker! Uh. Oh, Stephanie. And she's like the only real person. Everyone else is a fucking muppet. Other than this guy, and it's like they're her, and then the villain, and the hero. And now those are the only real people. That's a fucking W bit that.